Curtis Lawson was arrested and charged with shoplifting for pretending to return $39.57 in items he didn't buy from a Knoxville, Tennessee Walmart. His charge was later escalated to a fel felony because he had been permanently evicted from Walmart previously, um, and now he is facing up to 10 years in jail. $39.57, 10 years in jail, and he is uh, presently uh, in jail awaiting his trial. Just like I spoke about last week that there is a man who has been awaiting trial for 10 years, not been convicted, not been tried, 10 years he's been in jail. So here we have another example of that. Um, I got this from all sorts of sources, and that's why I, I don't usually name my sources because I... I source my information from a minimum of 10 sources. Um, one of the sources is Injustice Today, which I would tell you to, to go check out, Injustice Today. Uh, and the headline was, How Walmart is Helping Prosecutors Pursue 10-Year Sentence for Shoplifting. Uh, Curtis Lawson entered a Walmart in Knoxville, Tennessee, had a receipt for $39.57, in purchases made earlier that month, he needed cash. He walked through the store picking up the same items he had purchased previously. Dishwasher detergent, Oral-B refills, and a pair of girls' leggings. Put them in a shopping bag. He brought them to the register, returned the items using his receipt, and received $39.57. Lawson had committed what is known as return fraud pretending to return the items that he didn't buy. When Lawson walked into the Walmart empty-handed, Walmart loss prevention officers uh, decided that he looked suspicious. They watched him. He picked up the clothes. Uh, they immediately detained Lawson when he went to the customer service desk to return the clothes. Uh, and, he, and Lawson admitted right away that he had stolen the items. Uh, he didn't fight. There was no weapons, there was no pose of violence, no threat to anyone. This man needed money, $39.57. Um, he was eventually charged with shoplifting and criminal trespassing because like I said, he had been caught in Walmart shoplifting uh, in the past and they gave him a slip of paper that says you can no longer come into Walmart. And he did. So that's what that's about. Now, Lawson had um, at least three outstanding warrants, most of which were related to traffic violations. So I just want to say real quick, I also found another article and the spin that was taken on this was something like seasoned burglar finally faces time for his crime. People to believe things that are not true. And then again, influences the policies of the country and who people vote for. So because of the outstanding warrants, Lawson's bail was set at $25,000 total, and he was immediately taken to jail, where he still is. On January 9th, a warrant was issued for Lawson that escalated his shoplifting charge to a felony because according to the arrest affidavit, Lawson was not allowed to be inside Walmart at all. Therefore, uh, with his return fraud was now burglary, a felony punishable by up to 12 years in prison. His bail was then raised to $5,000. Um, so he doesn't have enough money for bail, which I said in, in my stats in, in a story last week that there are thousands of people every year who are in prison who cannot afford bail and they sit there and they sit there and the amount of money that it costs taxpayers for them to sit there is incredible. So back to the article um, or in, back to my research. In Tennessee, as in many states, shoplifting items under $1,000 is a misdemeanor. But in this past few years, the Knox County District Attorney's Office has been prosecuting people like Lawson under the burglar, blah, burglary statue, which under Tennessee law is defined as unlawfully and knowingly entering a building without consent of the owner or committing theft, which I looked into it and that is false because Walmart is a public area. It is a, a public facility. So that law really doesn't 
apply, but I, I guess they apply it. And we all know that politicians are paid off. Um, so. so it turned out that Lawson had been arrested for shoplifting a bra over four years earlier in another Walmart location. And at that time, Lawson was issued the notification of uh, restriction from property and uh, re notification of restriction from property by Walmart. So um, he shoplifted a, a bra in the past. He shoplifted $37.57, $35.57 of uh, items now, and he faces up to 12 years in prison and can't can't pay the bail to get out at this point. Um, so Charm Allen, who is the Knox County District Attorney, vowed after the uh, a discussion to keep up charging shoplifters in this way to be hard on shoplifters that she will continue to charge them in this way so looking at if they have a, a past offense we can turn this into burglary we can put them in jail for 12 years I did not look I actually I tried to find out who pays her I could not but I'm sure someone does Across the country, more state legislators are increasing the penalties for multiple shoplifting offenses, uh, offensive, a move that has been encouraged by the National Retail Federation, a trade group that lobbies on behalf of retail businesses. According to the trade publication, Lots Prevention Media, legislation has become a, a primary tool in combating organized retail crime. So now they're calling... Um, uh, a person who has a multiple offense of shoplifting in their lifetime, organized retail crime. Wow. How about the crime of the big corporations and the politicians who rob the people blind or the crime of the oil companies who pollute the water and kill people? Um, but that's not a crime. That's, I don't know, a part of the economy. So, uh, yeah, this is increasing all over the country. Lawson was convicted of burglary in March. He's still waiting for his sentence, sentencing hearing, but because of the burglary charges, his options for parole and alternative sentences are limited. A representative from Knox County DA's office said that he is likely to receive the maximum sentence of 10 years. Unfreaking believable. Lawson's attorney and the public defender's office have noted that these felony prosecutions have increased since the 2014 election of the current Knoxville district attorney, Charm Allen. So I do want to look into Charm, 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 Charm A. Allen and find out what is the motivation for this person to be doing this because you know that there are dollar signs involved. In the meantime, it appears that the new law is being used to prosecute dangerous retail gangs <laughs> um, uh, and to penalize them. Dangerous retail gangs, she says. I love how they um, stage everything to be this big threat to Americans in the economy. Dangerous retail gangs, like uh, bad hombres and that the Mexicans are rapists. Like anything to cause fear in Americans and the Americans uh, or people in general, a lot of them are eating it up, eating it up. Um, I guess that's why Jerry Springer had such a big following because I guess that's why Stormy Daniels is on Saturday Night Live. Uh, people like the drama. I don't know. People like to hate. I'm not really sure. So um, these are just some stats, and I mentioned this last week in my report about the man who has been in prison for 10 years and has not even gone to trial or been found guilty. The U.S. incarcerates more people per capita than any other nation in the world. More than 2.2 million people are behind bars in the United States. The average cost of housing an inmate is $20,000 to $30,000 a year and could be more the price tag comes at direct expense of public money that could be used on public education, uh, Medicare, medical care, and public assistance. And one example of that was that California spent 2.5 times more money housing and feeding inmates than it did on educating students. 
Whew. Uh, mass incarceration is not a result of high crime rates. The U.S. has, yes, the highest incarceration rate in the world, but because it imprisons more types of criminal offenders, including nonviolent offenders and drug offenders, and keeps them in prison longer. So this is another example of that. Time Magazine said 25% of prisoners, that's 364,000 people at the time that this was written, are nonviolent, lower level offenders that would be better served by alternatives to incarceration, such as treatment, um, community service, or pro uh, probation. I absolutely agree with that. Just throwing people in jail and letting them sit there, it's it doesn't help them. And there have been studies that showed that that what the prisoners go through in jail actually hardens them more um, and they might come out even more prone to uh, commit crimes. And also I did a report uh, saying that, you know, because these people are, have criminal records, they're having a harder time finding work where they're getting paid less. And so that's a continuous cycle. Um, yeah, and it just keeps going. So uh, let's just talk about how much money these politicians and the prison companies make off of these, uh, putting people in jail. The largest private prisons in the USA donated more, oh, I'm sorry, this is, this is what they, this is how the prisons control the policies in this country. This is why uh, mass incarcerations are happening right now. Uh, the largest private prisons in the United States, they donated more than $10 million to politicians since 1989. In addition, $25 million spent on lobbying efforts. In the 2016 election cycle, private prisons gave a record of $1.6 million to candidates and parties outside and outside spending groups. Thank you.